wisdom and insight for worship leaders and music teams all around the world. For more details, email thewell at planetshakers.com. Hello and welcome to The Well. Welcome, Malaysia! It is so great, so great to be here with this crazy bunch of people. We are, we are so excited to be here. This is the first ever episode of 2016. And we thought, what better way to do it than here in Malaysia? What do you think? <laughs> I kind of feel like we're on Oprah. Free cars for everybody. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, BJ, of course, who normally is on the well with us, couldn't be here. So we have uh, roped in Andy Harrison. Make some noise for Andy Harrison. Very... <laughs> who just preached an amazing message uh, this morning. And then none other than Pastor Sam, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and I can't introduce myself. And here's Joth Hunt. Yeah! <laughs> thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But of course, we're here in Malaysia at the Awakening and we just came from Taiwan. So why don't we talk about uh, how that was? It was amazing. I, I love to go to these other countries and we couldn't even speak the language, but nope. we spoke the language of worship. Mm -hmm. And wherever you go around the world, you can just lift up the name of Jesus. And together as a family, the family of God, we can see God move and people get touched and transformed. It's amazing. It's true. And that's one of the things that's amazing about the anointing of God. It transcends culture, it transcends true. our language. Yeah. So, you know, it doesn't matter who you're leading in worship, the anointing is the thing that draws people in. And, uh, you know, we even learnt a bit of um, Mandarin. We did. We were singing the song, Nothing is Impossible. And I believe it's... Uh, Do you remember it? Wo Shao Xing, Wo Shao Xing. Oh. <laughs> which, what's, what's your translated means, what's your which translated thing? means, I wash my car or something like that. No, <laughs> it means I believe, I believe. And, uh, True. Does it? Correct. What's your thing? What's your it was close, thing? right? <laughs> the girl behind you is going, no. <laughs> <laughs> no la, no. <laughs> But, so, so we were just in Taiwan and we had a great time in Taipei yeah. and uh, anyone been to Taipei? Yeah. Did you got that real tall tower? The one, what's it called? 101. 101. 101. Yeah. yeah, we didn't do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to and anyways then we came here and we, we've been looking forward to this and uh, it's been great. Uh, who's enjoyed the first two sessions? <laughs> yeah. And uh, we're believing for great things for the rest of this conference. And every um, time we get together on the world, we love to do a little segment called What's On Your Heart? And so we would love Andy to share today what is on his heart, because of course God loves to speak to us and speak to us in our heart and he lays things on our heart for us to share and bless other people. So go right ahead, oh, Andy. Thank you very Take much, what? Pastor. Um, well, I thought uh, I would just continue off from the last session that we're in, in Awakening. Uh, you guys were obviously there, but you know, we were talking about the things in our heart and so I think that this is something so important for all of our, you know, everybody involved in praise and worship um, that it's not, you know, before we're talking about our skill, it's really important that we are improving our skill, it's really important that we want to be our absolute best for the house of God and for God to, you know, in our worship, but I think even more important than that is paying attention to what's going on inside of our hearts. Yeah. Yes. You know, in the last session we were just talking about uh, the scriptures that talk about out of your heart flow all of the issues of life yeah. and and really we have the privilege of leading people in worship all around the world and it's amazing seeing the difference between one person lost in worship hands raised bawling their eyes out before God and somebody can be standing next to them totally oblivious to anything happening and it's not because God's not moving That's it's right. not because he's not doing powerful things he is but it's because of what's going on inside of those yeah. people's hearts. You yeah. know? Yeah. One person's heart is so open to God and one person's heart might be closed off. And so I, I think my encouragement, what's on my heart, is my encouragement to all of us, whether we're here or we're, we're watching online, would be to really ask Holy Spirit, before we ask Him about leading other people, let's ask Him about leading ourselves. Yeah. How's our heart going? Before we go to lead other people in praise and worship, Where's our heart at? You know, have we cleared out of the way all the clutter and the things that get in the way with our hearts? And are we totally available, totally surrendered to God? Because I've, I've discovered, you know, I would rather 
not necessarily know the songs perfectly, yeah. not necessarily be the most prepared, but have my heart so open for God yeah. because in that position, that's where He can really use me. So yeah. that would be my encouragement to us today. Let's be people that firstly allow Holy Spirit to speak to our heart, get our heart in a position where we then, then can lead other people into a heart encounter with God yeah, as well. Great. Not just into the right actions, but into a heart encounter with God. That's awesome. great. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, Amen. that's really good. I think it deserves a round of applause. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say it. Okay, no, no, no. Well, we're going to um, dive into this week's main topic of, of the episode of The Well, which is question and answer. So, uh, so if you have a question, I would love for you to put your hand up. And on the roaming mics today, we have Jesse over here, who's our guitar two player over there. What and guy. then uh, the bearded bass player, Joshua Ham over here, who is go going to roam around with a mic. So if you have a question, why don't you put your hand up? One of these guys will come towards you and introduce yourself. Say where you're from, what church you're from, what country you're from, if it's not here. First question down here. Uh, my name is Amanda. I'm from Indonesia. So I want to know how do you write songs? Do you write the melodies first or the lyrics first? Do you co-write? And do you have do you set the special time to write songs together, or you are you are alone in your room and then some melodies just pop up in your head? That's all. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Amanda. All of the above. Uh, when we're writing songs, sometimes we write them together, sometimes we write them by themselves. I don't know about you guys. I get most of my ideas either in the car, driving along in the car. Or in the shower, don't picture it, but that's where they happen, the ideas. What about you, Pastor Sam? Same, absolutely. Or, you know, just putting on my mascara. Same. <laughs> Ooh. Same. Yeah, Andy puts it on his mascara and gets some <laughs> sweet ideas. It's very inspiring. I think it's just that time when um, you're quiet, you're still, you're undisturbed, and, you know, you, you can just have the Holy Spirit just download something to you and... Yeah, you might get a little melody in your head and the important thing to do though is to get that melody out and mm. record it. Yeah. So, you know, we're always with our phones, right? Yeah, always. So that's what I do. I might get a melody and then I get my phone and press record on one of those apps and then, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, save that. Save <laughs> that. That'll be on the next album. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> what, what's it going to be called? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, there's two types of ways we write songs, and generally the, the way that we all do it is out of overflow. We've just always got something happening. You know, there's always, God's always doing something in our lives, always putting a song on our heart that it just comes out. But then there's other times where we do sit down to write a song for something. So the song Let's Go, everyone know that song? Uh, we, we wrote that song, we needed a song for our anniversary service last year, and so Pastor Sam and myself, we got, we got together and we crafted this song, which it didn't come quick, did it? No. We, this, this is a song that we put a lot of work into. We, we tried not to just write the same old lyrics, but you know, we dived into some of the hymns. You know, some of these old hymns have got such rich lyrics, and so we were inspired by those, those songs. So we tried to make it a, lot, a bit more poetic yeah. in, uh, in our writing. And it did change along the way. It did. So you, you need to allow that. You, know, you don't need to get stuck with that melody and that verse, and you know, just let it have its kind of own expression and change and be molded and because I think sometimes we get very precious on yeah. the melodies and and the words and um, I don't think you should do that I think you should just be open for encouragement or someone else to critique it and say eh, that doesn't sound great okay I'm not going to get offended um, okay let's work on it and and then we had this great song develop this question's for Joff uh, I'm Heinrich, I'm from Indonesia. I go to International English Service. And how do you hit your high notes so consistently? <laughs> Super glue! Super glue, la. J just so we're clear, did you say how do I do my hair consistently? Is that what you said? I couldn't hear properly. How do you hit your high notes? My nose consistently. Oh. We all thought you said, how do I get my hair stay consistent? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they didn't understand when you said super glue. They're like, what? <laughs> it, it takes practice and it's kind of like developing a strength 
uh, you know, if you go to the gym and you lift weights like I don't, but Andy does, um, you, you, that particular muscle will get a lot stronger and you'll right? be able to do more with that, really? with that muscle. Do you know oh, that? Right. Oh, you, oh, Andy, Andy tells me. No. So really, it's just practicing that constantly singing high, allowing your throat muscles to get used to that, that, that part or the way it feels and strengthening that. But you can actually develop your range, so you don't have to be stuck with that range. Who wants to sing higher? Okay, great, nobody. Okay, yeah, cool, <laughs> three people. You can actually sing higher than your, what you think you can. And it's just like learning a skill um, to develop. Yes, because muscles have memories. Mm. And so um, the, these nice muscles around here, they have memories. So the more you practice, the more you're um, ingraining into those muscles the way to sing these notes. So yeah, practice makes perfect. Great, next question. Thanks. Um, it's Jackie, and uh, I love you guys. I'm actually from Australia. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, uh, I think my question is very simple. Um, as worship leader, we give signals to um, communicate with the team um, what to do next and how to flow, things like that. And sometimes we watch the videos. We can't actually clearly see that how the worship leaders actually you know, give the signals so that because we know that worship is dynamic and sometimes we, we might not know what to do next in, or, or maybe the team is synced, that knowing what to do next, but sometimes we just don't see it. Is that the after work that being edited in the video part or you do give signals in a way? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what I'm asking. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, we, we definitely yes. do signals. And like, so everyone knows this is chorus, right? Uh, this is, for us, this is top of the song, or verse one. Uh, believe it or not, this, you know, guess what that is? That's the pre-chorus. Oh. You just gotta think of like milking a cow. That's, um, <laughs> that's the pre-chorus. I do that, I do that. Pastor Sam does a little crab nippers. <laughs> um, I don't know where that came from. Yeah, me, I Did made you make it that up? up? Okay, well done. <laughs> Our, our signal for bridge is this. This is upper key. Um, tag is this for us, which is like the last line, repeating it over and over again. Any others? Finish the song. So that means finish or I'll come and this? punch you. I have this. Yeah, this, th this. This means just flow with something musically. Play the harp. Play the harp. Um, <laughs> any, any harp players here? No, cool. All right, so, um, we, yes. Basically, the videos that you see live at, in Planet Shakers Conference, we have a set form, and generally we stick to that form, so we don't need to do signals through, through those songs. But there is definitely times where we will uh, go off form, and, you know, Pastor Sam, she's feeling something in the spirit, she will lead it there. Um, generally, your signals happen behind your back, don't they? Um, because we don't want to try and, you know, distract people. If you're up here going like this, you know, <laughs> what, they'll be like... So... In my, in my old, previous church, before I was in Planet Shakers, the sign for the bridge was this. <laughs> that made it difficult, like when you're holding your mic trying to sing the leading around, you're like... Or how do you do that with guitar? So, uh, you know, we don't want to distract people, so we do try to hide the signals. Um, so, so we can just, be, you know, be focused on Jesus and not distract anyone. But also, um, our band are really good at reading body language. And so whenever I'm leading, I'm also using my entire body to try and communicate what I'm feeling, what I want to do, my legs or my body or my hands. And, and so this is where you can get those um, fluctuations or intonations or whatever you want to call them in, in the intensity of the music or the quietness of the music. It's really using my body language so that I'm not always having to one, think about who's seen me, what's the signal, I, and I can just keep connecting with God and keep hearing Him and, and really trying to do most of my concentration on what God wants to do and feeling the atmosphere rather than have I signaled this or have I said that. Um, so the band have really got to know myself. And of course, um, we know Joth's 
things, you know, his head starts really going and his foot, yeah. So, so we understand each other because we've really gotten to know each other. And so that's really important about having a worship team that love each other and are great friends because the, the more you get to know people, the more you understand them, you can read them. And so that, that helps, I think, whenever we're um, leading. But also I have a button on mm. my microphone. Very tricky. And so this particular button I can depress and I can speak to all of the band and you can't hear what I'm saying. So there was one particular moment on one of our DVDs where we sang, He Touched Me. We did not rehearse that. We did not have that as part of our set list or anything, but I really felt the Lord say, sing that song. So I pushed my button and I started to speak to um, one of our particular soloists, uh, Natalie, and I said, Natalie, it's uh, time for you to sing. We're gonna sing, he touched me and off you go, get ready. There it is. Here is my button mic and here's my button. And that's my rings that I always wear, have worn a <laughs> little thing there. But yes, I can depress that Hold up, and speak to everybody. And so that helps as well because then I can have a little conversation. Sometimes, you know, I've said things in that button to really um, help people focus or um, get Andy to do a drum solo and, or be a bit silly and say something funny. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what? <laughs> Um, <laughs> have you seen that person down the front jumping up and down? Maybe something like that. Yeah, look at that shirt that guy's wearing. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Great, next question. Yeah, I want to ask Brother Andy. Oh, man. My, my name is Aldo uh, from Hello. Indonesia, and <laughs> I'm uh, at GMS Church. So I want to ask about the expression to express when, like, Let's say in the slow beat song because can uh, can we like express with us like, smile something like that because what that I notice like maybe few churches like when we like try to smile like they ask, why are you laughing in the <laughs> slow beat song because yeah sometimes when <laughs> like I good. try to smile like it looks awkward. Huh? <laughs> that that might just be you, man. Sorry about that. And like they say why are you laughing in the slow beat? Are you blaming? Let's like sound that like that. Thank you. <laughs> what? Why no, are you laughing now? Yeah, I. No, I got that. I got that question. Yes. Don't laugh during the worship songs. Um, no, you can laugh. That, I think that's fine. No, I think your facial expression is really important, yeah. which is unfortunate because I lost control of mine <laughs> uh, a long time ago. Um, but we, we all as a, as a team would want to be expressing our worship to God, not just with our instrument or just with our voice, with our whole bodies and with, you know, with everything because we want to use all of our being to lead other people in worship as well. And so um, I think we are conscious of giving our full self to God and also we are conscious of, of how that would look, not in a vain way because we're worried about how we look, but we want how we look to lead other people into worship yeah. as well. Which is why we you know, might care about what we're wearing on stage, not because we want to be the coolest people ever, but because we don't want it to be a distraction and we want to reflect you know, the presence of God well. So the same thing, I think, with your, your facial expressions. I wouldn't be worried about it, but I am conscious, so I try to be conscious. Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> try to be conscious of, um, you know, of how we are... Oh, I see. <laughs> of, of how we're, uh, how we look. <laughs> we're we're we filming the well. Oh, sorry. Where are you filming it from? Everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. And you can't afford to be too self-conscious around here. <laughs> because... <laughs> yeah, Great, next question. <laughs> So hands going up, up the back here. Uh, hi, my name's Kenneth. I'm from Kenneth. KL. I'm from Seattle's Church, Kuala Lumpur. Uh, I want to ask, how do you guys consistently jump, dance, sing, and lead in the same time? Very fit. 
McDonald's. No, no, we we uh, we we were in the gym every day. Uh, <laughs> not at all. Uh, you know, it's like it's like the first time you go for a three-kilometer run, you are so tired. Really? I think. <laughs> That's so they tell me. Um, no, you, you get really tired. But if you do it every day, you, 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 your muscles, like we talked about before with your throat, your muscles get used to it and you don't feel as tired and fatigued. And that's, we do this a lot, you know. Most, probably five, six times a week we are doing this, this much energy. Four services. Uh, four services on a Sunday we do. So your body gets used to doing it. We still definitely get tired though. Yeah, we do. And look, early on we were really, really bad at this. Like, <laughs> Because we would record ourselves and then we would listen back to us go, yeah, do you, I can do anything. I can. Anyway, it was so bad. Yeah, it was. And then, but because we looked at that and listened to that and thought, that's not good, that's not going to bless anyone, <laughs> unless, you exactly. know, they're blessed with laughing. But it, it just became that encouragement for us to do something to make it better. And so we developed, I suppose, a way to jump to and hold our diaphragm. Mm. So like, the core of you becomes very, very important. And so to be able to um, hold these notes, even though you're physically jumping up and down, um, your stomach muscles become very, very important to keep them nice and fit and strong. And yeah. so little things like that, but also, we decided that it's, I'm not going to go to the gym just to um, please myself. I'm going to go to the gym because I want to give God my best. Yeah. And so my worship to Him, it, it becomes more than just a little bit of a sound out of my mouth. It becomes, I'm going to use this entire body to glorify God. And yeah. so I want to get fit. I want to get strong. I want to jump the whole time. I want to jump in my high heels. None of this is going to be um, a restriction in what I'm going to give God. Because some people can come into church and go, well, it's not cool to jump. It's not cool to dance before the Lord. I'm just going to keep that for the nightclubs or, you know, going to see a concert. And we're the exact opposite. I want to give my all in praise to God in church and at home. So I'm going to use this body as a vessel of worship and and then hopefully that will inspire other people as well. To They see me being passionate. If they see me getting touched by God, they go, I want that. Yeah. And so we can be a great inspiration for other people as we worship and abandon ourselves and just go for it. That's great. Next question. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Seth um, from Kingdom City. Hi, Seth. So, so um, the, I actually have two questions for you. Like, I'll make it short. Like, the first question I have is, um, how do you guys usually create your set list? Like, is it by picking new songs or do you like ask God and then like he tells you and that kind of thing? And that's my first question. And the second question is like, uh, like, bef like instrumentally, like before auto call, like what, what chords do you play? Like how do you know what to play? Do you feel like God is telling you to play this? And that kind of thing. Like, yeah, so these are the two questions. Great. Well, we definitely pray about our set lists and, and, and we want to be Holy Spirit led because, uh, you know, a song, it's doing a set list could seem like a natural thing. You're just putting songs on the paper, but really the songs and the way they're put together and what song comes next is all creating this big moment that builds some, to go somewhere, you know? And so we want to think about what song is going to go into the next song and what is going to create this amazing lift in the atmosphere and, and this amazing presence that just keeps going greater and bigger and higher. And so uh, we, we will definitely pray and, and say, God, you know, what songs should we do? And for me, I, I, I picture in my imagination, what do I want to see happen? And this is a good encouragement to you guys who do pick, who choose the songs. What do you want to see happen on, on your, in your church on a Sunday? Do you want to see everyone just going like this? Or do you want to see them going crazy in praise? You know, and, then, and then you pick songs that you believe will help usher that you know, move in. And so you know, people aren't going to go crazy to a hymn, but people will praise crazy to a dance song. You know, and so we, we'll choose these different styles to what we want to see happen in, in an environment. Do you want to add on to that? Yes, sure. So, say for example, I'll use the song that we've sung twice today already. Um, just one touch. No. Just one touch. Just yeah. one touch. 
I, as I was preparing for the conference, that was one of the songs that I really felt God say, I want to use that because I want to emphasize that it's just one touch from me. And, you know, just those words of, um, you know, letting go of our burdens and all of those sorts of things and shame going and all of those lovely things that um, we sang today. That was God saying, I want to do that. And then as soon as we sang that song, as soon as you responded to the altar calls, what happened? Well, God started to move in that song. And so choosing songs that are God inspired, that have His touch, are really going to usher people in consistently into that personal encounter. And so we don't want church to be, um, you know, a, a gathering of just people that have music happen. We want church to be every single Sunday, every time we gather together, a time where God is in the midst and everyone can feel Him, experience Him, hear Him. And so that's why it's important, I think, to choose God, songs that God wants us to choose. So yeah. that's how I do it every single time. And I'll get a feeling or I might get a theme. So I might choose songs that are along that theme. Like I really wanted to lift up the name of Jesus. So we sang you. And again, you know, those words, just lifting up Jesus, exalting Jesus. Um, that's exactly what he wanted to do. And then, well, everyone got a powerful touch, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll, got to, we'll have to answer that second question another time because we've got time for two more questions. So there's one up back here. Hi, guys. Uh, happy belated Australia Day. I'm Frankie from Brunei. Hey, Frankie. Uh, we're representing AFC Church. Um, just a question about you, uh, for you guys. Um, you guys, or you guys, about time management, in terms of time management, you guys are busy with urban life, songwriting, worship practice, prayer meetings, and all those. What's your schedule like? How do you actually go through your week? From Monday to Sunday. Go, Andy. You want sure. Um, yeah, it's a very busy church, and we're doing lots of things. I'm our youth pastor, also part of the band, and also involved in all the services. So there's, for me, yeah, there's lots of different things to do. I think we make a decision that when we are doing one thing, we are totally focused on that one thing. I know that's not doesn't help with time management, but we don't want to be scattered. If we're leading worship, we're not thinking about it. We are totally focused on that but our we're willing to be busy I think we're, we've laid our lives down for God we're willing for our lives to be totally full of what God is doing yeah. in our lives we're not precious about but God I need my time or what yeah. about this I think yeah. that's the most important thing is because people say oh but yes there needs to be wisdom okay who's the most wise God, God. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to use his wisdom not the wisdom of man to determine what's a healthy thing you know yes. um, I don't know, um, but it's busy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is busy, and we have, we have laid down our time for God. It's His time, it's His life. You know, we've totally surrendered ourselves to Him. And of course, we make sure that we have a day off, so all of us on staff at Planet Shakers have a day off, and we really try to enforce that is a day off. Do not come into the office, do not check your emails, have a day off. So. We um, work hard, but then when it's time to rest, we really make sure that we do rest. So we had a couple of days spare before we started this awakening. And so we had fun and we went to the water park and went on that really big slide and <laughs> went in the water and so you know it's important that when it's your time like your, um, your day off or whatever you have fun you you do relax you do sleep in but then when it's not your day off you give your 100% to God and anything you give to God he always redeems yeah. so yeah and very quickly on the end of that we also try and do the very best that we can in our own time so that we're not wasting other people's time and so we don't actually do much of rehearsal, for instance. We rehearse, we rely on the team to be rehearsing and knowing those songs so that when we come to a sound check, we just go through the songs as a sound check. So things like that help with the time management because we're not going over things that we could be doing individually. That's great. Last question for today. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Aaron. I'm from the UMC. A quick question to Pastor Sam. Because um, for the past two sessions for worship, you have led the worship and it was very easy for you to go in. So it's definitely a lot of back end into the secret place. My question is more, how transparent are you 
and how you do your devotion, if you do devotion with your team. Because I understand it's a very family-based church, so how often you do it with devotional with the team, and how transparent are you with them? Do you share your struggles? Do they share theirs? And stuff like that. Thank you. Yes. I, I would say that I'm pretty transparent, yeah. yeah. And um, I would definitely, everything I do share is out of my own experience, and I do share stories of the reality of life and um, ministry and the various pressures and um, sometimes you know I'll share the struggles as I'm going through them as well like I don't wait until I've totally overcome something and because I think everything is valuable you know the journey if I can share my journey with someone else then that's going to help them and but also they're going to look at me and go wow, she's normal, she's going through the same things that I would go through, and oh, look, she's not crazy, yay, there's hope for me. So, <laughs> um, I think it's very important not to put on a facade, you know, just because you wear the title of pastor doesn't mean you've arrived. I'm so sorry to disappoint you. Like, becoming a pastor doesn't mean you reach the pinnacle of life and that everything is easy from that moment. No, you keep going through struggles and, and various trials, but yeah, we believe in really being open and honest about everything that we're going through. But yes, we do um, have uh, times of ministry together and um, we cry together and worship together and minister to one another. and. Yes, we've really developed that culture in which we can um, be free to be ourselves. Um, and God has really knitted us together with, you know, this singular heart and vision to do something great for God. And yeah, He has created a great family. And that it perhaps is because we're so open and honest. And um, one thing that, you know, I want to have part of our culture forever is that um, we're not to be the judge of people. Jesus is the judge, and that's what his job is to do, and we don't need to judge others or look down our noses at someone because they're going through a struggle, and um, we're, we're all saved by grace. It's not, a, it's not of our own, you know, awesomeness. It's God, so to understand that and, and keep that real openness, that, that's what we've done along the way. And, will continue to do and and hopefully that will keep us humble and dependent upon the Lord and uh, keep Planet Shakers where it is and that is vulnerable, open, honest. And, yeah. That's great. <laughs> if you do have any questions that you want us to answer in a future episode, because we usually film this episode in our studio in Melbourne, uh, and we read out questions on that episode from people who email questions in. So if you have a question, email it to the well, T H E W E L L, the well at planetshakers.com. And then write your name, where you're from, and the question, and then we can read it out and answer it. So write that down if you want to remember that. But before we go, guys, yes. we have to give everybody one line of advice for this up and coming weekend. So starting with you, Andy, one line of advice, whatever comes to your mind. <laughs> Okay, this is from Taiwan where people spoke a different language. My advice is don't just lead how you think you would be led, but lead people from where they are at. If they speak a different language, if it's a different culture, then get to know that culture so that you can lead people. The whole point of this is leading people to God. So it's not just about how you feel, it's about where the people are at. Okay, that's yeah. good advice. Pastor Sam. I would encourage people to take their own experiences with God. So here at Malaysia Awakening, everything that you experience, the powerful encounter that you have with God, the passion that stirred, the, the um, intensity of this conference, take it with you. Don't leave it here. Don't leave those supernatural encounters in you know, your own home or car or wherever they are. Bring them to church and allow other people to experience those same encounters. I know that every time I've done that, if I've touched God at home, I've gone, okay, God, let's do this again. What I've experienced, how you've set me free, how you've touched me, now let's do that in a corporate setting. And he's been so faithful to always multiply that. And so, yeah, don't leave it here. 
That's great. Take it home this Sunday to your church, no matter what church it is. Yes, amen. And I want to encourage everyone of the praise and worship leaders or the people who choose the songs to do what I said before about, you know, praying to God and, and imagining, use your imagination. What do you want to see happen this Sunday? And then and ask the Holy Spirit to give you songs uh, for this particular Sunday and believe for God to do what you've imagined. Before we finish, we've got to read out the musicianary statement. Uh, this is a statement that we declare over our music team back home and we want to declare it over you today. It goes, we are musicianaries, powerful men and women of God that play skillfully unto the Lord, worshipping in spirit and in truth. With a heart of unity, we serve the, the, we serve the church locally and around the world with our gifts. We exist to usher the body into a corporate and personal encounter with the living God. If you want that, shout a big amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, we thank you so much for joining us today. It's been so great being here in Malaysia. We love you guys. Bye-bye.